Well, guys, I just want to welcome you to today's webinar. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. And I'm fully committed to making sure this is an efficient and effective use of your time. Um, you know, as owners of plumbing and HVAC companies, you know, you spend a lot of time and energy generating leads and generating opportunities and working with companies like ours and other marketing companies that are really focused on lead generation. Uh, it's really easy to forget about the lifeblood of your company, which is your past customers and your, you know, kind of your, your sphere of influence. And one of the most powerful things you can do to improve your profits and to maximize the, really the effectiveness of your business is to make sure that you're treating those customers well so that you can drive more repeat and referral business. And I've had the opportunity to mastermind with Brian Kaskavalsian. He's the owner of G4 Marketing Group. I recently interviewed him for our, our Plumbing and HVAC Marketing Podcast. And he talked all about how he was able to grow a couple of businesses from the ground up, one to the point where it had 100 trucks, 30 franchisees throughout the country. And one of his main uh, growth strategies was really focusing on the customer, investing in the customer, and driving repeat and referral business. And so from that, I said, you know, Brian, I want you to turn this into a training. I want to share it with our customers, with our prospects, the people that follow our podcast. And so I couldn't be more excited to introduce you right now to, to Brian Kaskavalsian, who's going to really explain his strategy and his system. So welcome me in, in, in welcoming uh, Brian Kaskavalsian. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me. So, um, yeah, so let's jump right into it, huh? Absolutely. All right. So, you know, as Josh alluded to here, you know, repeat and referral business is really kind of the lifeblood of a home service company. And that's really what we're focused on. You know, it's the lifeblood of every company, but really, we don't care about every company. We only care about your company, and you have a home service company. So why the focus so much on repeat business and referrals? Well, first off, I mean, really, from a practical matter is a past customer coming back for a service call or a job is really the number one most profitable easiest to sell phone call or lead that your company is going to get. They already know you, they like you, they trust you, and so they're coming back to give you more money. Now, the second most profitable, easiest to sell phone call or lead that comes in is a referral, right? And so those are, that's why we're going to focus on those two things. Now, referrals and repeat sales will lead to money, let's just be blunt about it, uh, in a number of different ways. One, more referrals and repeat sales will help lower your advertising costs. It'll help with increasing sales conversions and even, you know, not only just sales conversions, but also appointment conversions from when the time people call in and they set an appointment for a service call. Your customers are out there marketing and selling for you. If you do this right, they're actually working for you. Obviously, we want to earn more profit per customer. And then, bigger conversation than we can have today, but it's definitely something to always have in the back of your mind is that it helps you develop your business as an asset, as a true asset that has not just long-term sustainability, but also it's got ever-increasing equity value. For those of us that are owners, we have to be painfully aware of the fact that our business is always for sale, one way or another. Just so happens this morning, I bought my own business back again. You know? So every day we're making that decision. Right? And so every day when we come to work, we want to take those steps that are going to increase our profits and um, build our equity value. And referrals and repeat sales is a one of the absolute best strategies that you can use to accomplish that. Today, however, we're really going to be focused on profit, you know, more kind of short term, if you will, tomorrow, next week, next quarter, um, and next year. That's a little, you know, in terms of 
between equity value and and uh, what we're going to be talking about today, we're, we're really going to be more focused on how do we really grow our business and the profitability of our business over the next weeks, months, and, and couple of years. So um, real quick about me, I'm going to talk to you quite a bit about my um, the, the business that Josh was just referring to. But the reason I show this slide is to show that hey, I've been in the home improvement business for a very long time time. Um, the reason I got into the marketing business back in 2009 was because I really enjoyed the marketing part of all of my businesses. And I've, I've had a number of home improvement companies, um, one of which, as Josh mentioned, we actually turned into a national franchise company and we had 30 plus offices around North America and uh, we had three offices of our own. That company was based in uh, Southern California. It was called Handyman Network. Um, after I sold that company, I started this company called G4 Marketing Group because, again, that was really what I liked uh, to do, and that's what I was really, really good at. And um, over the last seven years, we've had the, the good fortune of working with hundreds of home improvement companies around the country, including um, a bunch of plumbing and HVAC companies and I'm and I, and I just I really love the plumbing and HVAC HVAC space. All right, so this is a snapshot of our um, of our business. Um, this was probably pretty close to the time that that um, we we um, sold the we sold the company. Um, we're doing really, really well. We we grew the business from basically from zero, from nothing, um, into a, a company where we were employing over a hundred handymen. Um, we, like I said, we franchised it around the country and with thirty plus offices around the country. And um, as I started the uh, marketing business, I sold the company, um, this comp I sold the franchise company, but then we sold the um, uh, handyman company to our employees. But that's not the story. So the story starts <laughs> way back at the beginning when I started that, that company. I was the marketing guy. I was in charge of, you know, business development there. And um, how many of you, when it comes to marketing, kind of feel like you're doing this? Taking buckets of money and flushing it down the toilet. Well, that happened to me a lot. Um, and uh, But we learned, and we tested, and we adapted, and then we pretty quickly got very, very good at making the phone ring. And we got very, very good at servicing our customers. Now, at the beginning, when I started the business, I knew, I knew that this was a business where we really had to focus on the customer. I knew that once we got the customer, that there was going to be so much value in that customer, the back end. And so when we started the business, we actually, here's just a, a little tidbit. We started the business off the back in the customer list of another business that I owned. I owned, a, I owned a, a bathroom remodeling business, and we had hundreds of clients that we had serviced in that business. I just took that list and sent them a, a letter about the new business that we were starting, this handyman business, made them an offer, and that's really what kind of launched the business. So I understood all of these principles. In fact, the second month that we were in business, I had a newsletter, I had a customer newsletter that went out to all of our customers. I don't know, at that time, maybe 100 people or so. Um, what about the next month? Well, the next month I was kind of busy, and so the newsletter got put aside, and the next month after that, I put out a newsletter. The next month after that got busy, next month after that got busy. Long story short, there were three total newsletters that went out in the first year of that business, and that was it until later, much later, too much later. Even though I knew better, 
it was just easier for me to place ads in the newspaper, chase after new customers. And I know now, and I learned then after doing this for three or four years, that that was a huge mistake. It was doing this, throwing money uh, into a toilet. So my question to you is, and, and, and by the way, we weren't getting anywhere near all of the repeat business and referrals we could be or should have been getting. So my question to a lot of people when we have these conversations and when we do these trainings is, are you getting all of the repeat business and referrals you could be or you should be? If you've answered yes, my, my typical answer back to you would be, well, are you sure? How are you sure? What are you doing? So I want to talk to you a little bit about our leaky bucket and kind of how we fixed our leaky bucket. All right? Now, come back to this in a second because you know the if you, if we don't in our businesses have a way of capturing all of the relationships the re repeat business and and referrals and keeping in touch with that customer and keeping that customer ours then we have got this we have got a leaky bucket and all of the marketing that we're doing is not nearly as profitable as it could be not anywhere near as profitable as it could be. Again, because we're spending all this money, we're putting, just imagine in the bucket, we're putting all these customers into a bucket, but our bucket is leaky. Okay. So let's talk about the plumbing business here for just a minute. So, you know, the plumbing business, like our business, the handyman business, it was a relatively simple business to market relatively simple. I'm not saying easy, but I'm telling I'm saying relatively simple. People have a problem now and they have to solve that problem now. That's generally what gets people in the door of a plumbing HVAC company and other, you know, kind of like in our company too. It was a needs-based business. You know, I have a need, I need to take care of this, something in the house, I got to get it taken care of, right? And so they go looking for a solution because they have to solve it now this is where the internet comes in this is where other forms of advertising come in now I know that everybody on this call knows how important for your business the internet is today it's like the yellow pages was for us 10 years ago you have to be on the internet you've got to have a good presence on the internet so that when people have a problem you show up, you are there. And I'll just, you know, give a little plug for my friend Josh. I mean, they really know what the hell they're doing with, um, with, with internet marketing for the plumbing and HVAC space. So if you don't know, if, if you aren't doing really well on the front end, have a conversation with Josh. Appreciate, but, the, appreciate the plug. <laughs> well, you guys know what you're doing. So, um, so you've got to be where people are looking for a solution, right? So that includes the internet, of course, but also what else? Um, yellow pages. You know, a lot of people think yellow pages are dead. I know lots of companies that are still using the yellow pages and still profiting from the yellow pages. Direct mail, whatever it happens to, whatever lead sources there are available that you're looking at, be where your customers are looking for a solution. Provide your customer experience they will love. And then three is do everything you can to nurture and protect that customer so they keep coming back to you and sending their friends, family, and neighbors. This is basically a marketing plan for a home services company like yours, right? Marketing is all about creating customers, obviously, but it's also about keeping customers and multiplying customers. And sometimes we forget about the keeping and multiplying part. We get very, very good at the creating customers part. And uh, we sometimes forget about the keeping customers and the multiplying customers part. And so one of the things that we learned, and, and I have learned this the hard way, and it has cost me probably millions of dollars to learn this, but this is the business. The business is creating, keeping, 
and multiplying customers. That is the business. You happen to sell plumbing services. You happen to sell air conditioning. You happen to sell heating. I happen to sell marketing services. Josh sells marketing services. The business is all about the customer. And the customer is also the path to profit and to wealth. Right? The better relationships that we have with our customers, the more profit that we can make and the more wealth that we can build. And so another question we always ask is, are you doing all you can to get the maximum profit you can from each and every one of your customers? When it comes to customers, now, now listen to this because there's a small distinction in, in what, what I'm, what I'm going to say. You must be thinking of making the sale to get the customer, not getting a customer to make a sale. See, what, what I was doing for a long time in, that, in, in, in our company was I was getting a customer so I could make a sale. I was tracking transactions. And we had a lot of transactions coming in. I mean, we grew from, from, uh, from nothing to over 200 jobs, 300 jobs a month in less than 12 months. So I had a lot of transactions coming in. We had a lot of money coming in. The problem was my thinking was a little bit off. So I want to make the sale now, and since I have, you know, luckily for the last 10 years, you know, this has been in, so ingrained in my head, but I want to make the sale so I can get the customer because the customer is where the real money is, not in just the one-time sale. And so here's the main difference. The main difference is in how you think about your business, how you think about your customer. Do you think in terms of just transactions, how many transactions can I make versus how many relationships can I develop? So I have a client in the home improvement business. That this year, 2016, is probably going to wow. do $65, 70000000 million. Wow. He's a transaction guy. He's told me right to my face. He's a transaction guy. And he's very, 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 very good. One of the best. And there aren't very many people that can do what he does and get away with it. But he's a transaction based thinker. That's it. He gives, he sells a good product. He takes care of his customer. But once he's done with that customer, he's on to the next. Now, you could be like that, but there aren't very many people that really build a very profitable business and can generate wealth from a business like that. That is an exception. That's why I use it as an example. The relationship builder, the relationship builder is more focused on, okay, I've got this customer. I've spent money, time, and effort to get this customer. Now, what can I do to keep this customer? What can I do to keep, take this customer and turn this customer into more jobs, more customers through referrals, and ultimately more money? It's just a different way of looking at it. And so we all kind of have a choice in business to make. Are we going to be transaction thinking or are we going to be relationship thinking? And again, from my work with hundreds of companies and from my own experience, Relationship thinking are the most successful, profitable, and wealthy companies. Okay, so this is where kind of the term relationship marketing comes in. That's what we do now at G4 Marketing. We do relationship marketing because relationship marketing leads to more repeat business, it leads to more referrals, and it leads to more profit. So. Let's go back to Handyman Network. So my down here on the end here is my wife Addie. And today she's my she's my business partner in, in G4 marketing. But um uh, back at the time when we owned Handyman Network, she came in um around the time that I sold the franchise company, because we kept our uh store. We kept one of our, our three stores. And so she came in and she looked at the business and she's looking at this and thinking, man, you know, okay, we're really good at making customers, but then 
to look in the computer system and say, but what are we doing with all these people? What about all the people that we did work for last month, last quarter, last year, three years ago? What are we doing with them? Where are we, you know, how are we focused on them? And I, you know, I said, yeah, I know. I, I, I know better. I knew better. But, you know, I had to look at her and say, well, you know, we really didn't do a very good job of keeping in touch with them. And I think at that time, um, and I don't remember exactly the numbers, um, but our repeat and referral numbers were not very good. They were not very good. And so when Addie came in, she sat us down and she said, all right, look, there's a huge opportunity here and I'm going to focus on it. You guys don't have to do it. It was me and it was John that was running the, that, that was our day to day general manager. And then we had um, a couple of guys, supervisors in the field. And so she said, look, you guys don't have to worry about, it, but I'm going to put a system together and I'm going to go after um, this business. And within a year, she had tripled our results when it came to repeat and referral business. And so people always want to know, well, what did she do? What did you guys do with your company? Well, it's simple. This is what we did. We designed a better customer experience. So I was really focused on, like a lot of you guys are, I was really focused on the technician, the handyman. How did he look? What was his presentation when he got in the door so that he sold? Right? That's really what I was focused on. Right? I looked at I looked at how the phones were answered, but I didn't look at the entire customer experience. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, and I'm going to give you examples of all of this, and I'm going to I'm going to give you some uh, some uh, you know ways of of how we did it uh, back then. But the second thing was we said thank you to our customers the right way. We got our customers feedback. This was before the days of online reviews, like what they are now, what they've become over the last two or three years. But we wanted to get their feedback. We wanted to make sure they were happy with us. And if they weren't happy, we wanted to take care of it. And then we stayed in touch with them. We stayed in touch. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go over each of these things with, with you. But ultimately, ultimately what we did was we spent more time, money, and resources on our past and current customers. We knew there was a gold mine of opportunity there and we went after it. So let's talk about customer experience. So what is your customer's experience? Now what's really kind of, I guess what's kind of good about the whole online review thing, there was somebody that asked about Yelp um, before we started the, the webinar. Um, Yelp is problematic and yeah, we won't, yeah, let me not even go there, but everybody is painfully aware of the fact that if we do not have good reviews online, that we could be in trouble, that we will not get as many reviews as we need in order to capture um, leads online. And so one of the things that we've got to do is we've got to look at our customer experience. Is it this, is it this, or is it this, right? I like this graphic. So most home service companies leave their customers like this. In today's day and age, though, we do a lot more to avoid this than we used to even three or four or five years ago. But what most companies do is they're satisfied with the middle customer, the, the, the customer that's merely satisfied. To me, a satisfied customer is actually a liability. I don't want a satisfied customer. I want a raving fan. I want somebody that's happy, smiling. I want somebody that's going to go out and excitedly promote my business to other people. Right? I want somebody that's excited, that's going to go online, that's going to want to go and, and place a review. 
more about that in a second. But here's what you do with your customer experience. Here's how I did it, and here's how I help my clients with this process. It's very simple. Play prospect, play customer in your own company. Go through the entire process as your prospect and customer would. And then look at every touch point throughout that process and ask yourself a simple question. What do we have to do at this customer touch point to get them to say, wow, wow. That's it, really simple. What do we have to do to get them to say wow? So this goes to, how do we answer our phones? Do we answer our phones, uh, Brian's Plumbing Company, hold on. Or do we say, thank you for calling Brian's Plumbing Company. How can I help you? It's a little different, right? Probably most of you do the second, and probably some of you have better scripting than that, but I'm just giving you an example. I used to agonize over scripting, by the way, how we answered the phone, what we said when we got out with the, with the, uh, with the prospect. But then also, we got to look at what happens after the job is over, all right? So this was the first thing that we did, was we really looked at our customer experience and looked at all of the points where we could make it a wow experience. The next thing that we did was the thank you. So I asked, how do you say thank you in your business? Now, I know a lot of you know plumbing, HVAC companies understand the importance of the thank you. So a lot of you are sitting there at the end of jobs and doing handwritten thank you cards, and that's great. We did the same thing. So after every job came in, the paperwork um, was was uh, given to the office manager. She would uh, check the paperwork, and then she would write out a handwritten thank you card, and every day we had a stack of those going out in the mail. Now, was it consistent? At, was it as consistent as it could be? It was when Addie was there because she would not let it not happen. It had to happen. We also would do happy calls. I know a lot of you do happy calls, and that's great. But the key here is consistency, is getting it done in every single situation. Email marketing, email thank you, right? And then personal visits. So one of the things that Addie did, now she couldn't obviously go see everybody all week, but she would pick people throughout the week and make a point of going and visiting them. And so what she did was she put together this little, we have these, these Handyman Network coffee mugs, and inside the mug she would put stuff. I don't know what she would put, probably coffee, I guess. Coffee and chocolate or whatever would fit in a little coffee mug. The point was that she was going out and making a big deal and making people feel special and just giving them a little gift to say thank you. People don't necessarily care what the gift is. They just care that you went out of your way to say thank you to them. And so that was also one of the big things. And what was nice about that was that she got out. As the owner of the company, she got to go out there and meet people and meet her customers and know who they were and where they lived and, and what made them call us and what they liked about the service and what they didn't like about the service, right? So thank you. And this is what, this is, you know, we refer to this as saying thank you the right way. Customer feedback. How do you get customer feedback? And so again, this is a big, big issue. This is something that, um, you know, you can talk to Josh about. They've got a great feedback system. Um, Dean just did a how many part um, it was video. a nine part video series on the nine steps to get five star reviews after each service call. So we'll, we'll forward that to you guys if you want to check it out. Yeah. So um, you know, customer feedback is important. So we would ask, how did we do? We had surveys. You know, this was before, uh, we're talking 10 years ago, so we're, this is before we had the, the whole online system. So this was all done through 
um, phone calls. The technician had a, you know, like a grading uh, thing with them. Um, you know, how did we do? Um, when we did the happy call, we would ask, um, how did we do? We'd ask a few questions about the technician, um, how he was, um, how the service was. Um, today, you've got to use the technology that's available, and you've got to move those um, that feedback online in the form of reviews. This was a biggie. How do you keep in touch? So keeping in touch was one of the critical components, and I think one of the things that really changed everything for us. So. What Addie would do was she started to put together and take a little bit of our marketing budget and put it towards our past customers. So with keeping in touch, um, we, were, we weren't quite using email yet, so we were relying heavily on direct mail and the phone. Um, and then people always ask, well, what works best? So you could send out postcards, fine. Um, you could send out letters, fine, but we have always found works best in a service type business where B2C, even B2B, but we're talking B2C, where you want to stay in touch with your customers, the newsletter. And so one of the things that Addie did was she would every month, where I did three the first year, and then year two, three, four, five, there was no company newsletter. When she started doing it, she was committed to doing one every single month. And back then, the amount of work that went into putting a newsletter was even today, it's, it's, it could be a ridiculous amount of time. However, she knew how valuable it was, and so she put the time into it. And we had our... Um, what was it called? It was called the Handyman Herald. It was called the Handyman Herald. And it went out every single month. And it was printed and mailed. Real stamp, real mail, real mailbox. It went to our customers' mailboxes. And it was our workhorse. And that was the thing that was driving back um, a ton of business. And then we would do letters. At the end of the year, we would do letters. The, the thing about keeping in touch, so here are a couple of things to, to keep in mind when you're keeping in touch with your customers. The biggest mistake that most companies make is, is when they do communicate with their customers, it's almost always give us more money, give us more money, give us more money. It's about us and it's about our need for getting more money. Whereas the most successful companies are the ones that will ask for money. However, they've already worked on other communications where they're relationship building. Mean, and, and that's where a newsletter is really the best thing. And I'll show you some examples here of kind of what they look like. But a newsletter is a friendly package. It's not all about plumbing. People don't care about plumbing. They don't care about air conditioning. Right? They don't care about windows. They don't, they don't care about that. They don't want to read about that stuff. Right? And so if, if you make it all about that stuff, it's going to be junk mail and it's going to be thrown away. So with our newsletter, we followed a proven format. Right? We had a recipe in there. We had a fun uh, kids article in there. We would have a uh, maintenance, home maintenance checklist in there. Um, in that one, we had... Um, we had this um, um, celebrity, like celebrity birthday section in there. So it was more entertainment, but it allowed us to show up with our branding in a friendly way and hopefully engage with our customers every month. And it worked. And it worked. And it works for your business too, because the nice thing about plumbing and air conditioning is that people always need it homeowners always need the service so that's what we did hey brian to triple our results yes 
um, I'm really excited to see some of the examples, but there's some great questions. Can we can we answer some of the questions real quick? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a perfect time to ask questions. Perfect. All right. So Michelle Young had a great question, and it was, what's what's an average percentage of repeat business in this industry? I don't know averages, but look, if I'm in if I'm in home services, Addy got ours up over fifty percent. Addy got ours up over fifty percent. Wow! I would say that if you are not at at least forty, you got some work to do. So by that you're referring to forty percent of the business is coming from total business, yeah, repeat, as total opposed business. to new leads generated. Yeah. So sixty percent, you know, coming from from new, forty percent coming from existing relationships through repeat referral. Yeah, and then it just makes everything so synergistic because as you're spending money and getting new customers, if 40% of those are referring you to somebody else or using you again, then it just becomes a exponential growth at that point. Yeah, yeah. I have a client, Josh, I have a client that 70% of his business comes from repeat and referral. 70%. Now, this guy's not in plumbing and HVAC. He's in just like home uh, bigger jobs like windows, kitchens, bathrooms. Um, he does a few small jobs here and there, but he does mostly bigger, you know, bigger type jobs. And we're talking multi-million dollar company. So when he wakes up January 1, he can pretty much rely on a few million bucks coming in just from the relationships that he's developed nice. over the years. Yeah. So. It's tough to say. It's tough to say what an average is, but I would say if you're not at least at forty percent, you got some work. To, you got some work to do. So then, a follow-up question here from Reed Three Sixty Comfort, and I, I guess that's not your name, but I wanted to make sure I called you out by you know by name. He's saying, so is that forty percent of the dollar value or at forty percent of net customers? If that makes sense. Ooh. <laughs> hard, hard, hard answer. That. Well, we're talking. Yeah, I mean, we're talking. We're talking money. Um, but that's an interesting, you know, I mean, you can look at it, but there's all different ways that you can look at it. you. Every business is a little bit, is a little different, but I, I would say it, it, that's a whole long discussion, so I won't go there, mm -hmm. but I would say 40% of, of revenue. Okay. And so guys, if you have more questions, keep putting them in, you know, this is live and that's kind of the beauty of a live webinar that we can, we can interact, we can answer your questions and make sure there's not something that that's sticking in the back of your head. So we'll just, we'll, we'll hit Josh. Gilby, and excuse me if I said that wrong, Josh, is asking, how do you deal with the customer experience when trades when you deal with trades tradespeople and you're not really in control of the experience when they drop the ball on stuff? Well, how are you not in control? Do mm -hmm. they work for you? Do you not, do they not work for you? I don't understand. Are they subcontractors? So if they work for you, then you need to give them a process. So we had a process, and we trained on our process, the step training. by step by step. Here was the process. And if they work for you, your customer should have a relationship with somebody in the office and be able to call up and say, hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable, or something's not right here. And then the office then has to deal with it. If they're a subcontractor, which I, I, I'm not sure if that's the question, but I'll like answer it anyway. Yeah. If, if they're a subcontractor, my thing to them would be, look, this is how we do it here. These are our standards here. And if you can't um, live by our standards, then I can't give you work. But ultimately, if your name is on the contract, you better control that customer experience. Yeah, you got to train. You got to train your guys. You got to train them, train them, retrain them. Make sure that they're yeah. following your systems and procedures. That's how you control that experience. And then, uh, Alex. The, the funny thing is, Josh. You know, the funny thing is, is that um, with uh, home services, you know, the thing is, is that most of the time we hire people that have the skill to do the work. So we don't necessarily have to train them on how to be a better plumber. 
What we have to train them on is how to be a better customer service person. That's right. where you really got to put a ton of training into. Yep. So Alex Walter is glad to glad to have you here, Alex. It's it's an honor. Uh, is asking, can you give an example of an annual dollar you should expect to spend on each customer um, to keep them as a repeat customer? Well, <laughs> good question. So that's a, it's a good question. It's a, it's I you know there's a long answer and there's a short answer. The short answer is as much as you can. The longer answer is to figure out how much a customer is worth over their lifetime to you and how can we how do you maximize the amount of money they give you? How much are you willing to spend in order to maximize that value? Um, so for example, if a customer is worth a thousand dollars over their lifetime for you and it costs you seventy five dollars to get them. Uh, how much more can you possibly spend on that customer before you go negative? So that's one way to look at it. If they're, it, it and it's the same question if they're going to spend $10,000 with you. If they spent $10,000 with you and it cost you $100 to get them, how much can you spend over the next year, two, three, four, to capture the rest of the money? assuming you didn't get all the 10,000 up front. So you could do all of this stuff for just a few bucks a year per customer. I mean, a newsletter is a few dollars a year per customer. I hope, does that answer the question? I mean, it's kind of nebulous. I mean, I think maybe you answered it the best you could. It, for yeah. other, other plumbing HVAC companies, do you have like a, like a standard number? Is it like, Fifteen dollars? Is it fifty dollars? Any idea? Like a round? Like, and if you can't, you can't. But it would be great if you could give some type of. Well, yeah. I mean, if I think about just a couple of our clients, um, they're in the ten to fifteen dollar range per year per customer. Mm -hmm. and, and that's in the plumbing. That's in the plumbing space. Yeah. So somewhere plumbing, in that HVAC. Like you said, I think it really comes down to the average transaction value, understanding your lifetime customer value. You know, yeah, you can spend a little bit more potentially on the HVAC side. You know, if you're doing a lot of new system installation, then you might be able to do on the plumbing side. If that if that makes yeah. sense, right? Is so that does it make does it make sense to do a really quick? How do you get to that number exercise, or is that beyond? That might be beyond where we're at today. I think I think In we fact, covered it. I think we covered it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know, I think these are awesome questions. So I really appreciate you guys engaging in the process. But um, yeah. well, let's let's keep going because I, I know we got to be sensitive to you guys' this time. But um, yeah. keep your questions in there. At the end, we'll come back and maybe if we have a little time, we can drill down on that, Brian. Yeah. One thing that I want to let me go back for a minute to the very first question as far as what percentage is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the we have you and I have clients that that do you know, that claim that 60% of their business, 70% of their business comes from repeat and referral. And some of you might be there as, as well. But one of the things in that respect that you want to, want to look at is what are you doing to proactively get that, those people to come back? So we're going to talk about proactive versus reactive here in a second, but that's also one of the things I just, you know, when I threw that 40% number out there, I thought, well, you know, immediately my, my thought was, well, the person that's on here listening, thinking, well, okay, I'm at 60%, so I don't have a problem and I don't have to listen anymore. No, you do have to listen because if you do not have a system in place and you, and you are absolutely confident you're getting 60%, then that's fine. But if you don't have a system in place and you're getting what you think is 60%, then what would happen if you did more? So there's always room for improvement is my point. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, all right. So with that said, I wanted to share with everybody kind of what we do now. So that's what we did then. And we've learned a few things since then. 
And we've gotten a little bit better. And now, you know, we also have the experience of doing this for hundreds of companies. So let me lay out kind of how we do it now for our clients and some of the thinking behind it. And, um, and uh, so we'll go. So, uh, you know, real quick, a little bit about, you know, what our company does now is we noticed that, hey, we had this hole in our business that ended up, when we plugged it, ended up really kind of changing the face of our, our business. And so when we started the G4 Marketing Group, me and Audi, we thought, well, that this is an area that we really like, we're really good at, and let's get focused on that. And so that's what we do, and we created a done-for-you solution. So for our clients, and these are just a few of the clients we work with, and we work with uh, window companies, roofing companies, but also plumbing companies and HVAC companies throughout the country, and um, we do, uh, we help with a lot of the things that, that we uh, just talked about. So let's talk a little bit more about appreciation, showing mm-hmm. appreciation. So the way that we do it now is I always think about her when, um, when, when talking about appreciation. Um, Josh, this this image, I bought this image. This is not my grandmother. Oh, okay. She kind of looks a little bit like <laughs> uh, a little bit like like my grandmother, but um this image is actually called Perfect Grandma. And I think it's such like a fitting uh uh name. But I always think about grandma. I always think about, you know, how do we how, you know, our grandmas always, you know, want to make us feel special, right? And and if we have good ones. And so when we do appreciation, um, one of the things that we do is we send out our thank yous in what we call the grandma envelope. And our grandma envelope is basically a colored envelope, handwritten font with a live first class stamp on it and a funny stamp. So. Back in the handyman business, we would send out those cards that you would buy from Office Depot uh, that were blank inside and on the outside it said thank you. And it was like just like a very business-like card, um, very boring. We'd send it in the white envelope and you know we'd still handwrite it and put the stamp on it. But it was just a very kind of vanilla uh, type um, envelope and vanilla type card. Well, today for our clients, what we do is we send out what looks like a greeting card coming from grandma because we want to get that first off, we want to get it opened. But second off, you know, we want to start off kind of in the right way. And so this is an example from one of our plumbing clients. In fact, one of this is one of your clients as well. Great guy, great, great company. And, um, you know, when they open the card, it says, we're grateful to have you as a customer. And there's a nice message there from Greg. And we put the person's name in there, handwritten looking. And, um, and then what we do is we put in there a, what we call a bounce back card. Now, I learned, I learned the power of this strategy years and years ago when we were doing letters at the end of the year to our past customers. We would include in there, I started to include Handyman Network gift cards. And so when we started to do these thank yous, and this is, you know, within the last few years, I thought I thought back to how successful those those gift cards were. And I thought, how do we incorporate that stuff into our our uh, program, and so now for every one of our clients, we put into the thank you card uh, a, what we call a bounce back card. It's a plastic gift card that you know, just like you would get like an Amazon card or a restaurant card or whatever. But here's the thinking behind it. Now I'll, I'll give you the, my thinking behind this. I want if if we have a new customer, one of the best ways to really lock in that customer is to get them to come right back. How quickly can we get them to come back? Left to their own devices, they probably won't come back until maybe they have another problem. Or maybe they're, you know, again, this is like reactive to proactive. But 
man, if I can give them an incentive to come back within 30, 60, 90 days, then I have a better chance of locking them in and not losing them next time they need service. Because now they've called our number again, they've talked to our team again, they've had our truck out there again, they've had our technician out there again, they've got our paperwork again, right? And so that's my strategy here. And it works incredibly well. And it's also a way that we build the lifetime value of the customer. Right? So instead of waiting, so if they spend, say, 400 bucks, if the average ticket is $400, and we didn't do a lifetime value exercise here because we don't have the time, but let's say our first transaction on average is 400 bucks, right? instead of waiting for a year to get that next transaction, what can we do to get that customer to spend money with us again right away? Right away. Right? And so that's one way of not only getting them to spend more money with you, but it's also a way to kind of lock that customer in to you. Now, let's say that we do get them to come back in 30, 60, 90 days, which we're very, very good at with this strategy. Then what we want to do is not send them the same card, but we want to employ the same strategy. So we send them a thank you again card. All right, so every time they come back after that, they get a thank you again card. And the thank you again card is a little bit different, but then there is the gift card in there again. Because again, if I can get them to come right back, if I boom, 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 if I can get them to come back three times within the first four to six months, four to nine months, I've got a really good shot at not ever losing this customer, especially if I'm doing some of the other stuff that I'm going to show you. Of staying in touch, staying in touch. Does that? Am I making sense with that, Josh? Absolutely. For everybody. Yeah. And I love yeah. the, I love the visuals here because I mean it, it really helps to have a visual to go along with what you're what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and I don't like, quite frankly, I mean, the reason I'm sharing so much is because it's you. I, I typically don't like to share kind of what we're doing behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. But this strategy just works so well that um, you know, I'm kind of sometimes reluctant to share it because I don't want somebody to compete against your clients and my client, but it's not easy to do. So that's why we do it, we do it for them. Mm -hmm. um, all right, then the other thing is follow-up mailers. So it, let me just back up for one second. So in between steps one and, and, and two, one of the other things that you really want to focus on, and I'm not really going to focus on it too much here, is getting the feedback and the reviews. And plumbers, um, air conditioning, heating companies are really good about having a review platform in place, um, whether it's, it's Josh's system or it's our, we, have a, we have a system called Authentic Feedback. There are other ones out there in the, in, in the industry. Um, but you've got to have a feedback and review system, and I'm just kind of taking that as a, you know, kind of for granted that everybody's got that. Hmm. Then the other thing is, now the next step in this is, how are we staying in touch? How are we following up with this customer? So can, like can I, I said, can I like... Inter, can I interject real quick, Brian? Sure. The, and for those of you that follow us, you know that, that Greg Joyce is one of our, one of our clients and, and one of our great case studies, and I've seen the numbers on this before he started sending these thank you cards with the uh, with the twenty five dollar discount, and he he just he said let's do it. Started sending it out after every service call, and the consistency and the volume of people that are cashing in this twenty five dollar gift card it still blows my mind. It, it just it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, he has stacks of them in his office. <laughs> Um, all right, so the next piece of this is, okay, so we've said thank you. We're staying on them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. After every project, after every service call, then what we want to do is we want to stay in front of them. And so when we put this, again, I'll give you a little bit of insight into how we put this together. So this is a postcard newsletter. It's a big, giant, oversized postcard. You'll notice on one side, we've got a recipe, we've got a bad odor in your kitchen, we've got a little article, we've got fun facts, we've got a message from, we want to make it friendly, a friendly format, which is uh, what a newsletter is. And then on the other side, that's where we get a little more aggressive. So my question to Greg when we were setting this up was, tell me what your want 
services and products are. There's a difference, you know, a need versus a want, right? And so his big thing was bathroom remodeling, bathroom remodeling. So I said, all right, we're going to put that. That's going to be front and center. That's going to be the big ad that goes out on your follow-up cards. And I don't – last time I spoke with Greg, um, Josh, he was – he didn't have the exact numbers, but this card was like – a bump of 60,000, 80,000. I don't, I don't know exactly what the number was, but it was a big number of bathroom remodels that he was getting, bathroom remodel leads that he was getting um, from these from these cards. Nice. So the follow up, yeah. you know, these follow up mailers are going to work. So the other way, and my favorite. My absolute favorite is the newsletter. And like I told you before, that was one of the things that Addie really worked hard to put together. Every month, she spent days putting the newsletter together, getting the content for the newsletter. And she was, mind you, she was using a template. She was using somebody else's template, and she had to fill stuff in. It would still take days to get the article, to get the customizations in place, and blah, blah, blah. So when we put our program together. It took me two years to figure out how to do this, but we put together the Happy Home Gazette for our clients, and we design a print newsletter every quarter, January, April, July, and October for our clients. It's called the Happy Home Gazette, and we customize. There's a bunch of different places in this newsletter where we customize it for each of our clients. Um, this actually, this is a plumbing, air, uh, plumbing HVAC and electrical company um, that we work with, and this is what her um, uh, spring newsletter looked like. Um, the nice thing about newsletters, I knew I threw a bunch of stuff up here, but inside the newsletter, we still follow the same proven format. I didn't make this stuff up. I just I go with what works. I investigate what works, and that's what I use. And so when we put together a newsletter, we've got a recipe in there, we've got uh, uh, FAQ section, toilet problems and replacement, um, but that's the only real plumbing article you're going to find. The rest of it is, you know, fun family stuff, fun stuff. We have a movie trivia contest in there. Um, we have our referral section. I'll talk more about referrals in, in just a second, how to get more of them by having a referral program, but it's there front and center on the newsletter. It's mentioned in everything that we do. And then the other thing that we do for um, a lot of our clients, more and more, and I just grabbed a couple of examples from our plumbing and HVAC clients, is we do these custom inserts. And so Tammy, Tammy's very cool. She has a great, she has a great business, great visuals, um, great people. And so what we did with her was we came up with this idea for her insert of calling it Love Notes. And Love Notes is a front and back insert that goes into the regular newspaper that's co or newsletter, it's completely custom designed. So we've got Tammy there, we've got an employee spotlight. This is a charity that they uh, support. And then on the back, we put together this um, ad, essentially, for her home maintenance, because that was something that she really wanted to um, promote. Um, here's another one that we did for uh, for Jeff, another client that you and I have in common, mm -hmm. uh, Josh. Yep. And um, we basically get with him and with Tammy every quarter. We ask them a few questions, and they're done. That's it. We put everything we put everything together. So I can't stress enough how you know if you're going to send stuff out to your clients, customers. Um, a newsletter is probably one of the best things that you can put together. It doesn't have to be as big and fancy and colorful as ours, but just be aware of the types of, of material uh, and content that you're putting into it. Don't make it all about plumbing. Don't make it all about electricity or HVAC. That's not what people care about, and that's not what's going to get them engaged with you. And if you don't mind just, just interjecting real quick, I know we're, we're short on time, but if you go back through my my interviews in the plumbing marketing and plumbing and HVAC marketing podcast, where I interview million dollar plus plumbing and HVAC companies on how they keep their phones ringing, how they how they really have grown to million dollar plus companies, um, you'll hear in almost every one of the interviews 
the most successful guys are using printed newsletters. They're actually printing a newsletter, yep. sending out to their customer base, and they consider it to be one of their top marketing initiatives. So, you know, this isn't just, you know, Brian showing some cool stuff. I and mean, this really works well in the real world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the, the other thing that we've done, so let's talk about referrals. And um, one of the things, one of the big problems that a lot of companies have is that they do a very poor job of letting their customers know how important referrals are to them. They do a very poor job of promoting referrals. They do a very poor job of asking for referrals. So one of the things, and, and we were too, um, when, when we were doing this stuff, we weren't that great at it either. It's taken a lot of time for us to kind of think it through and develop a program that is, that helps to do those things. And so we created our referral rewards program for our clients. Again, it's part of a done for you system. But the one of the big issues is that the, even the companies that have a formal referral program, you ask them, okay, how do you promote it? How do you, where do you talk about it? They say, well, there's a brochure that goes in with the contract or there's a brochure that goes in with the folder that we give them after. Okay. I said, okay, that's great. When's the next time you talk to them about it? Well, that's it. Well, how many referrals are you getting? Well, not that many. Well, okay, because you're not talking about it, right? So what we did was we put together a formal referral rewards program. It's got a, it's got a website. It's got a contest. It's got reminders. And then we talk about referrals in the printed newsletter, in the emails. I'll show you the emails here in a second. We talk about it in the email. So we talk about it in everything that we, that we do in every communication that we do. Now, one thing about the contest is the reason, the main reason why we run a contest, we do it every quarter with every new newsletter, is very simply so that we have an excuse to go back to all of the customers to talk about referrals. That's it. We created an event that happens four times a year so that we could talk about referrals remind our customers that we are referable and ask them for referrals. Okay? So that's the referral program. And um, we've got a bunch of tools and trainings and stuff that, that go with that. Um, but let's talk quickly about email. So a lot of people are not using email marketing like they could be, like they should be. Um, it's not easy, uh, just like all of this stuff, you know, none of it's easy. It's relatively simple, but it's not easy. Um, but we have, uh, we use email marketing consistently, regularly, and um, basically after the job is done, not only are we sending out a thank you card, but we're also sending out a thank you email. And we recommend that the office also do a phone call. So we're hitting them in all different ways, right? We're hitting them with on the phone, we're hitting them an email, and we're hitting them in their mailbox. Anything that you do to go back to your customers should be a multi-channel approach, right? You want to use all three approaches. And so we do two tracks of emails. We do one track that's just a personalized kind of keep in touch track that's really more about you know, building a relationship and it is asking for money. And then we also have um, a newsletter. And um, so the newsletter kind of follows the same format as the printed newsletter, except that it's a uh, obviously a digital version of the, the newsletter. And um, we've been doing these newsletters now for seven years. This is one back from 2011. I'm going to change the slides soon. <laughs> uh, but we've revamped the, the, the newsletter so it's mobile responsive now. Um, we've tightened it up. We've learned over the years kind of what works, what doesn't, what gets opened, what gets read, what gets clicked. So it's something we're always working on. 
but it's all customized for um, it's all customized uh, to to each client. Um, but we're hitting them once a month with an email newsletter. With some clients, we're hitting them a couple times a year with a physical printed postcards. With other clients, we're hitting them four times a year with the full blown Happy Home Gazette newsletter in the mailbox. And um, so th these are the ways that you can be in t stay in touch with your customers, making sure that they don't forget about who you are, what you do, the solutions you provide, and most importantly, how to get a hold of you. Hey, Brian, can you click back two slides just real quick? Because I, I, think, you, yeah, I think you kind of glossed on this, but this is one of the most powerful aspects of this, really marketing it automation really at its finest. If you can imagine, customer gets served and they don't get one email. Look, I mean, are you, are you telling me this is like 15 different emails that are set up and queued to go out after after a service call is initiated? Yeah, I'm just showing the first 15. This is actually goes out. There's a couple years worth of news of emails that uh, are going out. Yeah. Power, powerful stuff, and it comes from comes from you, the owner, just kind of saying, "Hey, just wanted to chuck in about right. that or the other." A marketing automation at its finest, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's how you know. So that's how we do it for our clients. Hopefully, by sharing some of that stuff, it's it, it's valuable for everybody that's listening. Um, but the nice thing about this too is that everybody's busy nowadays. Everybody's busy. You, uh, most companies don't have the time to put together a newsletter. Most companies don't have the time to do thank you cards anymore. Let alone write emails, schedule emails, send emails. Um, so our program basically does all of that stuff for our clients. And it's you know, as you know, Josh, it's super easy. Mm -hmm. They just send it once a week or a couple days, a uh, couple times a week um, if they're using a the service Titan or other CRM they can just set it up automatically so if a job closes out that comes to us in the form of an Excel spreadsheet and we kind of take it from there um, really it should just take a few minutes a week and we do uh, we do all of all of this this work we try and make it as easy as possible and the nice thing like you said marketing automation at its finest look I'm not sitting here writing emails for 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 my clients. Um, we have set up a platform that's working 24/7 behind the scenes. You know, so our clients could be you know relaxed. They could be working on their business. They can be hanging out with their whatever they're doing. Those emails are going out. The newsletters are going out. The thank you cards are going out. They don't even have to. They don't have to think about it, worry about it, manage it. Nothing. As long as we get a name. And we were talking a little bit about Greg. Um, what you know, what kind of blew me away about results? Cause people always want to know. Well, does this stuff really work? So what we did when we first started with 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 Greg was we put in our own tracking numbers into all of the pieces. And what blew me away, what really you know, the direct mail part of it didn't really blow me away that much. I mean, we got a hundred calls in three months. Um, we got we were getting. Um, I think a 10% uh, or better return from the thank you cards, the people coming back and doing more work. But what blew my mind was that people were calling from the email. So we put a different phone number in the email versus in the direct mail. And damn it, people were calling from the email. I was like, I was blown away. I was like doing cartwheels down, down the hall because that's that's pretty amazing. So um, anyway, so this stuff, you know, the stuff works, um, and uh, you know, like this was after just a few months, he was getting like 20 cards a month were were coming back, uh, were coming back to him. So um, Josh, I know we, I think we went over a little bit on time. I hope that's okay with everybody. And um, absolutely, looks like everybody's I, still here, paying attention, and we appreciate it. And I think it's awesome, awesome stuff. Cool. So, um, do we want to answer some questions? I've got some resources, obviously, for people if they're if they're interested. Let's, what, let's what explain. Let's do? explain the resources, and then we'll open up for for questions. Okay. Cool. So, um, you know, if 
if uh, anybody out there is interested in learning more about how we automate this process and make it easy for plumbing companies, for HVAC clients, we, we'd love to talk with you. Um, even if we don't work together, obviously we don't work with everybody. Uh, even if we don't work with you, we can help you put together kind of a plan of action um, of what you can do yourself and in, in, in your company to boost your repeat business, boost your referrals, and um, just do better with creating relationship with your customers. So if you want to schedule a no obligation relationship marketing strategy session, you can call us at 305-856-8788. We're here in Miami. And... Um, or you can go to the website, gfourmarketing.com, and just go up to the Get, it, get Started button, and, um, and then just fill out. There's a form there. Just fill out the form, and uh, we'll get back with you, and we'll set up a strategy session with me or more than likely with Addy. What's kind of cool is Addy does most of the stuff, and so you know when when you do a strategy session with Addy, you're getting it from the person who actually like really took it and executed it in our business. And then also um, we have a couple of things that we can send out to you if you'd like. We've got the definitive guide to relationship marketing, where we talk uh, more in detail about about uh, these ideas. Um, and share some examples with you. We've got a blueprint that we created, uh, the Referral Success Blueprint. This is a big poster-like thing. And then I wrote a report specifically for plumbing called The Fastest, Easiest, Most Profitable Way to Double the Income of Your Plumbing Business. I'll be happy to send all of that stuff out to anybody that wants it. F fantastic that stuff. That was a mouthful. <laughs> I mean, fantastic stuff. I think you guys all got great ideas and insights here on how you can leverage direct mail, email marketing, newsletters, referral rewards program to drive more repeat and referral business. Uh, I can say firsthand experience with some of our top clients who have implemented this. Um, they love the fact they can upload an Excel sheet and, and be able to just focus on what they need to focus on and see a great return on investment. So imagine if an email or a series of emails went out to every customer as you after every service call. If you had a thank you note with that $25 discount or, or coupon coming back to you after every service call and you were sending out a newsletter on a quarterly basis and you were sending out a monthly email newsletter, I mean, there's no way you're not going to get more repeat and referral business, which will help you significantly improve your, uh, improve your profits. So I, I think it's a no brainer to, reach out to Brian and his team, kind of hear them out, see what they can bring to the table. I know based on what I've seen from other clients that this stuff works really, really well. So there, there's a couple questions and we still have a lot of you on the line. So I, I, I want to use this time. We're still live. Brian and I blocked out as much time as we need in order to engage with you guys on this stuff. But I just want to go back through and address some of the extra questions that I had um, one that I thought was pretty pretty good was another one from from Alex Walter and Alex is I know on the, the service roundtable and he's always posting very thought provoking content so uh, appreciate you being on here and his question is we're finding there's a decreasing customer loyalty when former yeah. customers don't have heat and don't have cooling they call around to find a contractor who gives instant service when we can't. So how do we encourage former customers to be loyal and wait for us even when we can't provide fast service? Bribe them. Okay. <laughs> I don't, no, I, I'm kidding. Um, well, that's a, you know, it's a great question. You, you know, it, it goes back to, you know, having a customer experience that's so good that they only want to experience that from you, but also you gotta you gotta keep in mind that it, you know if somebody doesn't have heat and it's cold outside, or if, or if, you know it's really hot outside and they don't have AC, they want to have that problem fixed right away. Um, you know, the, the big thing with that is that's more of an operational issue. I think that goes beyond marketing. That's kind of an operational issue that I think is best handled. Um, by you. I'm not really an operational guy, but here's what I will tell you, uh, what, what I would suggest, 
is is there a way for you to kind of um, have your customers on on a on a given first priority I know you probably try and do that and you don't want to turn away new customers but can you do some sort of priority list have you created some sort of club if you will maintenance program where they have to pay an annual fee and in exchange for that annual fee not only do they get a couple service calls throughout the year but they're put at the top of the list when they call you on in situations like that yeah that, that that's good that's good feedback hopefully alex that that helps um if you have a follow-up on that feel free to, to post it in here uh, ron doris said he showed up a little bit late and wanted to know if, we, if you guys work with electrical contractors sure it's the same principle it's the exact same principle excellent you know yes. it's get customer nurture customer and get customer to keep coming back and refer us to other people the thing about electrical is you probably don't have as much repeat as a plumber would mm -hmm. let's say or an HVAC company would so you got to focus probably uh, and I'm just making an assumption here not knowing your company but you probably have to have a much bigger focus on electrical because that's one of those so think about electrical for a second I mean you're in it so you maybe don't get it as much but finding a good electrician is not easy it's not an easy it's easier I think to find a plumber than it is to find an electrician so once you have an electrician and they mention uh, electrician to somebody else in their circle you should be getting referrals because electricians are not that easy to find yeah yeah good good point so certainly feel free to reach out to Brian um, you know, for, for, for that particular, for that particular trade. I think there might've been a roof run here as well. Brian, um, is an expert in that, in that industry as well. Um, okay. There's a bunch of questions here and I, I think stick with us guys, because you're going to get as much value probably out of the answers to these questions as you did throughout the course of the presentation. So, and if you have questions, post them because we're live, you know, Brian is a very high end consultant. His time is extremely valuable. So the fact that you have him here right now to answer your questions Take advantage, and if you want to raise your hand, we can actually unmute you, and we can have a voice-to-voice -voice conversation as well. So uh, Ryan is asking, Ryan Tobrog is asking, so we can call you to get the documentation you're talking about. Ryan, if they want to get the the guide and the blueprint, you want them to call the office for that, or do you want them to go to the website? Sure, they could do that. Um, we have, there's a website set up, I believe it's Plumber profitsacademy.com and if they go there they can also get the report they can get the blueprint um, there's a couple other resources there that they can get or they can call here whatever is easier for them okay I'll, um, I'll I'll send that out as a follow-up for you guys as well in case you want to get it so good good questions um, Ryan was asking for you to repeat your number um, we'll come back to that Brian uh, Ryan it's up on the it's up on the screen so Alan, this is a good this is a good question. Alan's asking, what's the best way to ask for reviews? And I know both you and I can speak to this at nauseum, but since you're the expert on today's call, Ryan, I'll let you run with it. Well, the best way to ask for reviews is first understand if you did a good job, if people are happy, and if they are, ask them to do you a favor. You know, let them know how important it is that. Um, that people uh, that are searching the internet who are looking for a service company uh, tell them the truth you know tell them that hey look you know they're looking for reviews they want to know just like you uh, mr. homeowner mrs. homeowner just like you they're looking for validation from other people and you know it would really be helpful for me and I'd really consider it a personal favor if you wouldn't take just a minute and go online and just let other people know about your experience with us I, I would just be honest about it yeah because once they give you the feedback and they say oh you did a great job we're real happy it's like okay 
you know, in the, cus- in, the, in the customer's mind, it's like, okay, well, I gave you my feedback. You did great. What else do you want from me? And a lot of people get shy after that point. It's like, yeah, he's got a point. Well, you got to take that to the next level and say, yeah, okay, that's great, but I could really use a favor, and here's what it is. And you just find your own, what words you're comfortable with using. But I'm always for tell the truth. Tell them the truth. Yeah. And, and, and use, huh? use tools and systems, right? There's great tools that will help yeah, you absolutely. automate the way you request an email, uh, request a review and uh, send via email and take them to a page where they can post that review. So definitely use a technology like, like Brian's uh, authentic feedback or review buzz or nearby now. Uh, we're, we're putting out a whole series of the, the best review automation tools. So we'll, we'll, we'll be sharing that with you guys over the next couple of weeks. But make sure you have some type of technology that can help make it easier for you. But at the same time, it has to be imbre- embedded into your business process that you're going to provide great service. You're going to show up on time. You're going to wow the customer like Brian talked about and give them a reason to, to actually want to write that review for you. So another question uh, here from Ryan, which is a good one, uh, going back to the question on happy calls, how soon after the technician leaves the home do you make it a happy call? And second part of it is, uh, which member of your team do you have do that? If you can speak to that a little bit, Brian. Well, I could speak, I'll speak from our experience. So okay. in, in, in our companies, there was always the one, um, the, the one main uh, kind of office manager. And so when the technician would come in, um, put his paper, you know, bring in his paperwork, uh, they would review the paperwork, make sure everything was good on it, and then we had a process. So it it would go to uh, um, the uh, thank you card, you know, they would get the thank you card, and then we would make make the happy call right away, um, right when the guy got back to, to the office. There's nothing wrong with calling them right after the guy leaves. There's nothing wrong with calling them a couple hours after the guy is left at the end of the day or the next day. I just wouldn't wait much longer than the next day, especially nowadays. Mm-hmm. Because if they're pissed off, or if they're not happy, if they're just kind of okay satisfied, you want to know about that as quickly as possible. Yeah, good, good, good advice on that front. Um, Ron's got a question. I think it goes back to your – Uh, Your thank you card example, where you send a thank you card right after the service and then a thank you again. And so his question is, how do you track the customer visit from first call to second call? Is that a dispatch program or is there some other way to do that? Well, when we do it, well, you should know from your CRM system if this is a repeat customer or not. Our system identifies, identifies who's coming back when we do it for our clients. So if I get Josh Nelson today, and then two weeks later, I get Josh Nelson again, my system identifies Josh Nelson, checks against his address and email address to make sure it's the same person, and then based on that is where we, where we, our system sends out, not the thank you, but the thank you again. So I'm sure there's a way within your system, in your CRM system, to identify uh, who's coming back for a second job by the way just by the way the people that come back for second jobs third jobs fourth jobs those people should be on kind of flagged different in your system and once you recognize that hey this person's coming back for the second time I would somehow flag them differently in your system so that you know okay here are my multi uh, multi uh, time Users is that the right way to say it? Multi buyers, your multi buyers. Multi, yeah, multi time buyers, because um, you want to treat that group of people a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great, great point. Um, so I mean, these are great questions. Of course, Brian and I are still here. If you have follow up questions, keep keep them coming. This is great. This is great stuff. Um, really, just want to thank you guys for for joining on today's webinar. You know, Brian and I's goal really is to help help you increase your sales, grow your revenues, accomplish your goals, really have the abundant life that you want in your plumbing or HVAC or home service company. And so I hope that that intent shines through on these webinars that we're able to add value. And I can tell you just from past experience, 
Uh, Brian's program works really well. And if you're doing any type of marketing and you don't have a system in place to follow up aggressively to drive more repeat referral business, um, it, it's really a no-brainer to, to reach out to Brian, have a meeting with him and or Addy, and, and discover how to implement this in your company the easy way. Like you said, I love that easy button where you don't have to do any of this stuff. It just gets done for you. So if you could call out what you want them to do and how to reach out to you again, Brian. Well, the best, easiest way is just call the office, 305-856-8788, 305-856-8788, and just get on our, our, on our schedule. Awesome. Well, hey, Brian, thank you so much. This was great information. Thanks for coming on and sharing. Thank you for opening the kimono a little bit more than you typically do. Uh, I think it was great. My pleasure. Anytime for you, Josh. And thanks again, everybody, for joining, and we'll catch you next time on, uh, on an upcoming webinar.